province to intervene. A First Nations decades long crisis with dirty water. I've never had access to clean drinking water. I'm 50 years old. How is the mess going to be fixed? Why does it have to be like this? Competing visions for the future of the oil industry, how the race for the White House could affect Alberta. And once in a lifetime discovery, the songbird that has scientists so excited. Global National with Donna Friesen. Good evening and thanks for joining us. COVID-19 cases are rising across the country now and it seems lessons learned from the first wave in the spring have not led to meaningful change in many long-term care homes. Despite promises to protect the most vulnerable, outbreaks are on the increase again. In Quebec, 44 long-term care facilities have at least one active case of COVID-19 now. Ontario is reporting active outbreaks in 77 long-term care homes. The problem is so concerning, Ontario's independent commission into long-term care felt compelled to release some of its recommendations early. Among them, not to delay fixing critical staffing shortages. It says a study on how to do that was released in July and that further study of the study is not necessary. What is required is timely implementation. As David Aiken reports in our top story tonight, it's not happening fast enough. In Quebec, the government has deployed what it described as SWAT teams to four long-term care homes where COVID-19 has come back. That province is determined not to repeat the scenes from the spring. In a virus that is so difficult to control, I think we've done a good job so far. Canada's top public health official says the outbreaks are different in this wave. What we have seen is that the numbers of long-term care facility outbreaks have increased, including in Quebec and in Ontario. The size of the outbreaks are smaller than in the initial um, wave. Exactly a month ago in the throne speech, the Trudeau government promised to help the provinces better protect those living in long-term care facilities mostly by creating new national standards for care. So far though, no legislation has been put before Parliament and developing national standards has only come up in passing on the bi-weekly calls the Prime Minister has with the Premiers. I think the first step and one of the advantages of a federation like Canada is we can learn from each other on how to deal with uh, particular challenges. Premiers are unanimous that the one thing Ottawa must do is give them more money for long-term health care. No problem at all sitting down with the federal government and coming up with a collaborative plan. But most of all, we, we need funding. Meanwhile, hospitals in Ontario are warning that elective surgeries may have to be canceled because hospitals are being used to help manage the outbreak in long-term care homes. 200,000 elective surgery procedures were canceled in the spring wave now hospitals are worried the same may happen in the fall wave. Doc? All right, David Aiken in Ottawa, thank you. We know the virus is spreading through communities, and in some places it's moving too fast for contact tracers to break the chain of transmission. That is deeply worrying. Manitoba, which has the highest number of active cases per capita in Canada, reported 163 new cases today. 51 people are in the hospital there with the virus, and that's a new record, too. Most vulnerable, again, are people in long-term care homes. Brittany Greenslade reports from Winnipeg. It's home to Manitoba's deadliest care home outbreak, and the struggles at Parkview Place has doctors raising red flags. If I had parents there, I'd be concerned. The facility has 108 positive COVID-19 cases, including Winnipeg's latest death and the 15th at Parkview Place. Dr. Samir Sinat is a director of geriatrics at Mount Sinai Hospital in Toronto and says more needs to be done. Is this a tragedy? Absolutely. Were these deaths preventable? Absolutely. Were these deaths um, unavoidable? Absolutely not. A March inspection of the care home found major concerns with cleanliness and infection control. And Saturday's first in-person inspection since had health officials say there is an immediate need for more training on outbreak protocols. We're reliving an experience in Winnipeg right now, Parkview, that we've seen repeatedly played out, and frankly, things that have taught us what not to do. In Ontario, an Ottawa long-term care home faced a similar outbreak with comparable numbers. More than 100 people linked to the West End Villa have tested positive for the virus, and 15 residents have died. The Ottawa hospital has since taken over patient care. 
a move Manitoba's health critic says should happen here. At this point, I think the government needs to step in, take over management, and make sure that residents, staff uh, are safe and receive the care and the resource that they deserve. But the province has no plans to take over care at Parkview Place. We don't have any uh, any immediate plans for you know for me to order uh, any uh, any place to be taken over. The province says instead it will work on the home's staffing issues and providing extra resources. Brittany Greenslee, Global News, Winnipeg. There is some news tonight about vaccine research. The federal government is spending an additional $214 million to support made in Canada vaccine research. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau warns he doesn't anticipate a vaccine will be ready until later next year at the earliest. Canada has spent more than $1 billion to secure millions of doses of a vaccine if a safe and effective one is developed. And deals have been struck with half a dozen pharmaceutical companies. The Prime Minister says Canada is now distributing hundreds of thousands of Abbott Labs rapid tests for COVID-19 across the country. He says it's now up to the provinces and territories to determine how the tests will be used as part of their testing strategies. The rapid tests can deliver results in as little as 13 minutes. In Quebec, more than 900 new COVID-19 cases were reported today. And there's a warning the healthcare system in the greater Quebec City area is on the brink of being overwhelmed. The region is under a partial lockdown. Bars, gyms, and entertainment venues are shut. Indoor and outdoor gatherings outside of work settings are also banned. The province's deputy premier says the situation is critical, and she had stern words for those not obeying the rules. Today, I want to be extremely frank and crystal clear with you. If we keep on the same track as we currently are going, as we currently are, we are going straight into a wall. The healthcare system will not even be able to take care of you anymore in some cases. Alberta's caseload keeps rising too. For the third day in a row, it set a record for daily new cases, 432. More than 100 people are in the hospital in Alberta and four more people have died from COVID-19. And next door in BC, 223 new cases were reported today. In Ontario, another Toronto hospital has declared an outbreak of COVID-19. Sunnybrook Hospital says five cases have been identified in a surgical unit. All infected patients are asymptomatic. One has since been released. Officials say the virus has not spread to other units. At least six Toronto hospitals are dealing with COVID-19 outbreaks. Promises are being made again to fix the grim water problem that has upended the lives of hundreds of people in an Ontario First Nation. The Netscamiga First Nation is a remote community about 430 kilometers northeast of Thunder Bay. For 25 years now, they've had to boil their drinking water, and now the water has been completely turned off because an oily substance was found in the water supply. Preliminary test results show high levels of hydrocarbons, a compound that can pose a health risk. Those who live there say it's shameful as can happen in Canada. Mike Lecatur reports. And when we're asked to, to live like this in Canada, former chief of Nisconega First Nation was getting water the only way that's safe in his community. Earlier this month, an oil sheen was spotted in the water reservoir. The treatment plant had to shut down, and most members of the community were airlifted to Thunder Bay. We're living in a country that's very rich. Why does it have to be like this? I've never had access to clean drinking water. I'm uh, 50 years old. Chief Chris Munias is calling for a complete overhaul of the water system, saying the current situation can't continue. Young mothers, go to the lake to scoop water from the lake so they can bathe their children, so they can rack in the bottled water that are, that's being provided. And this community has been under a boil water advisory for 25 years. In 2015, the Trudeau Liberals promised an end to all water advisories on First Nations territories by March of 2021. The Prime Minister points out progress has been made, but he wouldn't directly address the issues at Nisconega. It is difficult, uh, as we all know, to end these long-term boil water advisories, otherwise other governments would have done it. A spokesperson for Indigenous Services Minister Mark Miller went a little further, saying efforts have been redoubled to help the community, adding, quote, the construction of the community's new water treatment plant is in its final stages. Upgrades to the waste water plant have been funded by ISC and are currently underway. 
Local leadership is refusing to let 